Um, so uh, it's, I, I love this community. I love this social media that affords us the socialize. Um, of course, like I've said many times before, this by no means uh, replaces uh, our uh, desire to be with one another face to face. Um, and, uh, but on the other hand, it is very, very, uh, a very good replacement. I can't imagine um, uh, all the people who have, uh, without a doubt, um, with this technology that are able to connect uh, so amazingly. Um, you know, I tried a, a very uh, Guyanese dish that I made the other day. And I, what I did is then I took a picture of it and I shared it with my family. And, uh, and they, they got a kick out of it because I never cooked in my life. And, <laughs> uh, and, 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 and recently, uh, relatively recently, I started cooking. I said to say, they're now more connected. You know, they saw what I was doing. I, I sent it to my kids and, and, uh, and they also saw it. And anyways, uh, it, it's, it's amazing how connected we can feel when we see a picture. You know, when I see a picture of you this morning, it goes beyond just sending you an email or a text or even a phone call. But actually when we see each other face to face, we're able then to say, man, this is another level of connection. Um, and even it, 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 so if I were to put it in stages, you know, if you send a letter, then you send an email, uh, then you send a text, then you make a call, then you can actually do a live stream where you're the only one speaking. Uh, then you have a, a, a format uh, like this where we interact, we see each other's face and we interact and we connect a little bit more emotionally. So I, I love the medium that we have and I love that we can actually uh, uh, encourage one another as we begin the day. For some of us, I know it's not necessarily a beginning of the day, uh, but rather we are um, uh, stopping now. Um, some people begin their day much earlier, but uh, like I mentioned before, one of the ideas of we're trying to accomplish here in getting together in the morning is to tell you uh, that it's like we're having a quiet time in our living room together, and we're beginning the day with um, Jesus with God in our mind so that we could be uh, focused so that we can, even though we might begin to sink, we might actually uh, be pulled up uh, but like Jesus did. And so to keep our eyes fixed on the author and the perfecter of our faith. And so that's the idea. And so today when, when troubles come, which undoubtedly they're going to come, that's what Matthew 6 says, trouble will come no question about it is so that we don't keep from sinking and uh so today i wanted to talk a little bit about uh a song okay what are the psalms one of the things that's important to understand is that one of the psalms uh or the psalms actually are songs and uh, they were written um about people's experiences and so that's what we're going to talk about this morning so before we even go any further let's go ahead and uh, ask god's blessing on our time together i'm going to go ahead and ask john if you could go ahead and lead us in prayer and then we'll just take a a, a look at this for a few minutes and and uh, we'll begin our day centered on jesus the, uh, you know all of us have songs that we sing about but a lot of times when songs are written they're not written to us specifically but someone is actually writing about their experience and then we connect with that experience and that song then becomes a very meaningful thing to us for example at our wedding um the song that was the theme song for uh, robin hood the one with um the guy with the fake English accent, um, <laughs> Kevin Costner, uh, uh, was sung, the theme song for that, you know, I Will Die For You. It's the song that Melanie and I then embraced and we 
we had played at our wedding. And so what was written as a theme song for Robin Hood and about his relationship with Marion, we embraced and became, you know, I will die for you. I would lie for you. Talking about his love, he's going to do anything. And we taught, we, it became the song that we would actually, when we were dating, that I, that whenever it came on the radio, I, I, I turned it up real loud and I was, I would sing. Uh, and uh, even to this day, when it plays, it, it, it has a special memory in our mind. Or the song that was our first song that we danced to, which was, um, Tonight I Celebrate My Love For You. And that's another song that, that we get engrossed in, so to speak, because it was written for a particular situation, but we have embraced it. That's what the Psalms are like. They were written at a particular time in Israel's history by some particular people. And we then, because we now have become part of this kingdom, we can engage with it. And so that's what this is all about. And so we read the context of this song as they were writing this song about their journey. And, and, and at this point in time where they're singing about the fact who God is to them. And this is what it says. God is in verse, Psalm 46. I don't know if I said that, but Psalm 46 in verse 1, the entire Psalm, it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts their voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he have, has brought to the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. That God is our fortress. That's from the NIV. If you were to actually read other versions, there are three times there is something that is done in the psalm that actually helps us to break it down a little bit better. In another version, of a translation after Psalm 3, there's a word of, that's called Salah. Now, the exact meaning of that word, no one uh, really, really knows. There are some variations, but the idea, apparently, one of the most um, accepted meaning of what that is, it's, it tells the songwriter or the director of music to pause, and then they continue again. And it's almost as if the psalmist is saying, we could read it like, and it, it's written in verse 3, it written, it's written in verse 7, and it's written in at the end of the psalm. So three times it says to pause. And this is what it says almost like, let me reread that. And it says this in verse 3, when the rays crash and foam and the mountains shake before the surging sea, we do not fear when the, when the uh, in verse one, when verse two, when the earth shakes, when the mountains tumble into the depths of the sea, because God is our refuge, we will not fear. And it's almost like the psalmist is saying, pause and think about that. There is no fear because God is our refuge. Think about that. Then verse 7 is another break. And there's a whole section there. And he says, God lives within this holy city because of who God is. Because of the fact that the Lord is on our side. Talking about the, 
the wars that they had, that he is the one that commands their armies. God is the protector. Think about that. He continues and he says, when God is our protector, <clears throat> we see what God has done on the earth, that he brings ends to wars throughout the earth. He shatters the bow and breaks the spear. Uh, the, the spear. And then he says, because he's exalted over the nations, he commands the armies because he's our protector. Be still and know that I am God. Think about that again. And so God is, it's important for us to really think about who the Almighty is. And twice it says there, like almost like a chorus, God of Jacob is our fortress. God is our protector. God Almighty is with us. And so there's some things there for thought this morning. This is what it says. Even though some physical things can happen in our life, meaning the earth gives way, even though the waters roar and the mountains give way, God is going to protect us. Even though war, he will put an end to war, even though we may be involved in a war. You know, this was literally declared as a war that we're involved in. And here's one of the things, right? We are undoubtedly getting affected by what's going on. As a matter of fact, the U.S. of enacted a war act. That's why they are able now to pass this incredible legislation in terms of financial devastation that has happened to the world. This is a war. But the Bible says that ultimately it is going to end. And there's no reason for us to fear because indeed God is our refuge. And so whatever war you're waging, anxiety, talking to a number of disciples, and it's amazing how some people are walking with trepidation about, am I still gonna have my job after this? What is the government going to do? Through no fault of my own, I may lose my job. There's a lot of anxiousness. But there's a lot, a lot of good things. Like one of the things that Christians understand when we have battles is that God does his finest work Amen. through these moments. And oftentimes, because of these battles, we actually become stronger. You know, physically, if we were to break a bone and the bone gets healed, you know what's an amazing thing? That actually, the part that that bone gets healed is actually stronger than the regular parts of the bone. That there is actually an illustration of when things that come up that's a challenge in our lives, when God heals it, it actually now is stronger and better than it was before. I believe without a doubt that when all is said and done, that the world is gonna learn some lessons mm -hmm. from this. We're gonna glean some things. And one of the things that we're gonna glean more than ever is that we're gonna believe in things that we do not see because we would have experienced it. <clears throat> a lot of people that's gonna repent of their atheism as they're gonna see something that was simply a concept become a reality in their own lives. I believe one of the things that has been used as a metaphor, like I talked about the last time, that the church is a body. We because they're connected to each other. 
when we can't say to one another, I don't need you, that the world is going to understand perhaps more than ever. Wow, we are really connected physically, financially, as the whole world is connected to each other. Is that the lesson? I don't know. But what I know is this, because he is our fortress, because he is our refuge, because he is the one I don't have to fret. Oh, there are going to be temptations and there may be moments of it in my life. And we talked about that the last time. Peter began to sink, but it was the most gracious moment in his life because as he was sinking, he realized his need for the Lord in his life. He reached out his hand after the Lord calls to him and says, come here, Peter. What is God going to teach you? Here's, here's one of the things I want you to be excited about. What is the opportunity of learning? And what is that that I am going to become stronger for? Which bone is going to get healed in my spiritual body that is going to actually be strengthened stronger than it was before? We're going to sing about those days. You're going to write a song about those days that my wounds were healed my heart was broken my hope was dashed my fear was engulfing me and now I don't live like that anymore because it's been healed it's now you know one of the concepts the bible talks about that god turns weaknesses into strength and indeed brothers and sisters this is what i want to encourage you with this morning god actually wants to make us stronger mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so we want to embrace this time and let me tell you excitingly I'll, I'll share a little bit more about this tonight the eastern canadian church leaders got together we planned a, a eastern church wide service for sunday all of us one's going to be doing a prayer there are going to be some songs one brother's going to be preaching and we're just going to connect to one another all of us 10 30 and sunday that's something we haven't thought about to do it online and that's what's coming out of this easter two weeks from sunday we're going to have just an awesome eastern church canadian church leaders family service together i don't know how many thousands of people are going to join us we're gonna we're gonna actually promote it online promote it socially I mean, there are so many good things that's going to happen because of this. And so the reason I say that with confidence is because of the God that we serve. And so this morning, if the computer is not working the way it needs to, the goals that your boss asks you to do and you're not quite getting accomplished, even though sometimes you might be feeling, oh my goodness, the waves are crashing on me, or maybe the kids are just a little more ornery than usual this morning. Remember, God is our fortress. God is our comforter. God is our refuge. And be still. And know whose hands we're in. I know for sure what's going to happen, that this idea of my faith is going to become a reality. So that's my thought for the morning, guys, is, that, is to realize that who God is and because of it, actually, we can actually not worry and stress out ultimately. We may have moments of it, but 
we trust in our God. And so let's use this psalm this morning as they wrote about their experience and how we can talk about our experience during this time and trust in God. So just thoughts for the morning. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about anything hit you or, or, or something that I didn't even mention? I'll, I'll go ahead and share, Tony. Um, I, you know, I think one of the things that has hit me during this time is um, I, my natural personality is I actually really like um, being by myself. <laughs> I like reading. I like, I mean, it's my, it's my natural state. And I, and I feel like, um, one of the things that I think I'm learning about myself is even though I like it, my, my, um, my Christian spirit does not. <laughs> and, uh, and I need connection and it's, it's shown me, I think because I'm in the ministry, I, I generally have a lot of connection anyways, but I think because of this whole situation we're in, um, I found myself having to like really make that effort um, for myself to have a connection with people, uh, you know, making those calls or whatever. But it's funny because I, for you, this is like your worst scenario. For me, this is like my best scenario. <laughs> but I actually find it's, it's not that great for me because I think of what it brings out in my character. And so I've more than probably a, a long time in my life actually desired the connection with people um, as opposed to looking for that moment where I can just have to myself. So it's been an interesting um, development for me. So Okay, I'll just want to share since she shared that. She's my true daughter. I didn't know that. <laughs> Maybe she was adopted. Because <clears throat> that's exactly my character. So for me, I have to really speak and I have to push Nels in the ministry. It kind of comes to her. So I've been reaching out to friends, you know, from the past that we, I was in ministries with. And so I spoke to a friend of mine in Hungary. So this morning, I just want to say how grateful mm. I am that, you know, we have so many people around us. Mm. She is in total isolation. Mm because that's how hungry it is. If you leave your house, somebody follows you to make certain that you're doing what you're supposed to do. So she says, it's so nerve wracking that she just rather just stays home and mm. she allows, you know, they have a system where seniors get food sent mm. to them. So she's having her food sent. So she's seeing absolutely nobody. Yeah. Wow. So <clears throat> I reached out to her last night. I think it was only like 12 o'clock or one o'clock in the morning there. She actually, jumped out of her bed just to talk. She was mm -hmm. so excited. And we haven't spoken in, in, you know, in quite a while. And I thought, you know, sometimes, you know, we can see what's going on in our lives and forget yeah. just yeah. how fortunate we are. Yeah. So for those yeah. of you who know Ginny, I know uh, yes. does, just say a prayer for her. Amen. She Amen. needs all our prayers. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Mm. A couple more. We want to close at, at 8.30. So a couple more thoughts. Just uh, uh, just even hearing your voices also is of great encouragement. Tony, can I say something? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, so thanks for sharing this um, uh, sounds. And I know for me, and I know for the other people that I'm close to, we've never been equal sounds. The, the mm -hmm. sounds as much as we have in the last couple of weeks, you know. But the one you shared this morning, uh, you know, just even looking at the fact that God is our refuge and strength and ever present in trouble, you know, it's true. Um, but the reality is, you know, we're, we're, there's so much going on with social media. It's good and it's bad. And with social media right now, there's so much news and so much scare, so much. I was just looking at TV yesterday. There's a new channel now called COVID-19 channel that has so much <laughs> TV in there. <clears throat> so one of the things I'm disciplining myself to is, you know what, we know this is real. We know we have to take it serious, but you know, avoid just too much of the negative news. Like right? it's not helping. Excellent. As we're, to, yes. as we're trying to strengthen us <clears throat> to the scriptures, the more we hear these things, the more the fear comes in. So as I reach out to people and I talk to people, 
that's one of the things I'm trying to focus on to help people. Let's let's stay away from it. We know it is here, but let's stay away from it. And, and, and you know what, Kunle, you're absolutely correct. What we put in our minds, it's what we think about. What we think, put our minds, is the most dominant thing that becomes part of our uh, our 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 feeling. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come together in the mornings to say, you know what, guys, let's focus on Jesus. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up with this phrase. I want you just to pause and think about what it says in Psalm 32, verse 7. This is what it says. Listen to it. Speaking of God, you are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I love it. It doesn't say I go behind you to hide. It says God is our hiding place. Not a movie, not under the covers, not in a book. God is our hiding place. Let that sink in. Pause and think about that this morning. He's our refuge. He's our protector. Amen. And here is the icing on the cake. He is our hiding place. I love it. Let's pray. And brothers and sisters, let's have a great day. I'll pray. Amen. God, just so great to think about you at this point in time and to think that our bones and our he wounds that are going to be healed that are perhaps going to be some of the strongest part of our spiritual skeleton. We are excited about that. We're excited that in you we have found our hiding place. The fact that we're clothed with Christ and that Christ surrounds us gives us comfort this morning. The, the fact that you are our shield, not only our shield, but in you, we are completely surrounded from our enemies. No one can sneak up from the back and attack us. No. That there is, we don't have to walk and worry, is someone going to jump in from the side and attack us? No, because we are in you. Yes. That you have become our hiding place and our protection. And we walk then with not fear, with our chest straight up, not with arrogance, but to know like a child with their parents, when they're in their parents' arms, how comfortable they feel. I pray, Father, that's the comfort we feel when we're with you. Amen. Help us throughout our day. <clears throat> Or help us to be encouraged, help us to, for, for this time amongst others, to be a North Star, to be a yes. light, yes. so that we can look and think about it and realize, indeed, we can sing songs of deliverance, even in these moments. In Jesus' precious name we pray, and to you receive all glory and praise. Amen.